Hello and welcome to this section of Calculus 1, Extra Practice with Integration. Here we're going to talk about properties of the integral. So again, we're working our way forward teaching what the integral is, what the fundamental theorem of calculus is. Here we're going to cover some very important properties, um, mostly so you understand the terminology, and then we get into the subsequent sections, we'll just start working problem after problem. But I need to cover this introductory stuff so that you're not scratching your head, like what did he mean when he said that? For instance. So let's go ahead and talk about a few important properties. These are things that are in your books, but they're usually buried. I'm going to try to show you all kind of rapid fire what, what these properties are. And they're all, by the way, very, very, very easy to understand. So if we have uh, a graph of x and f of x, like we've been talking about this whole time, and if we have some function, you know, like this, that we're interested in between A and B. So this is A right here. So this is the area under the curve that the integral is calculating, right? One thing I didn't tell you, <clears throat> but that looks pretty obvious at first glance, is that this is positive area. In other words, if I calculate the area of this uh, the stuff underneath the curve, I'm going to get a positive number. That's all I mean when I say positive area. Now let me show you another example. So let's see here. This is f of x, and this is x, and here's another graph going down like this. Now let's say we have something like this. This is another graph, right, but it's below the x-axis. And again from a to b, this would be the area that you're calculating in this case. If the graph lies below the x-axis, so you're always calculating the area between the function and the x-axis. So wherever it lies, that's what you're getting. You might be able to guess, since I'm going through the point of showing you this, that if the area lies below the x-axis, that's a negative area. Now this is nothing mystical to be concerned about. All it means is it's a definition thing. It's how we're calculating the area that causes this to happen. If your function lies below the x-axis and you calculate the area, you're just going to get a negative answer. When you do the fundamental theorem of calculus and evaluate the top limit minus the bottom limit, what you're going to get is negative 5 or negative 3 or negative 10 or something like that if it's underneath here. So if your uh, graph is above the x-axis, you'll get a positive area. If your graph is below the x-axis, you'll get a negative area when you calculate that definite integral. And just so you know, <clears throat> if for whatever reason, let me draw another one here, kind of a small one here, if for whatever reason your graph, part of it is below, above the x-axis and part of it's below the x-axis like this, let's say you're calculating, here's let's say b and let's say a is the the axis here, then what you're really calculating is you're calculating the area here and the area here. So when you look between A and B here, if A is the origin, x is equal to 0, and B is over here, like x is equal to 10, part of your function lies above the x-axis and part of your function lies below the x-axis, then when you do the integration, you don't have to think about it or worry about negative or positive area. You don't have to worry about it, but I'm just telling you that the area that you calculate in this region is going to be positive, the area that you calculate in this region is going to be negative, and when you do the integration from A to B, it's automatically going to take care of all that stuff. So for instance, if the area here just happens to be exactly equal to the area below the x-axis, then you're going to get zero for an answer, because the positive areas and the negative areas will, will cancel out. So just kind of keep that